Hey, you're back with the Get Out of Deck Guy. And as always, my name is Steve Rode. I'm the old Get Out of Deck Guy. And with me is Damon Day, the new De Get Out of Deck Guy. Damon, say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, always so energetic. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, I got up extra early today so I can knock the cobwebs off and have a few cups of coffee. Because the last, I, I appreciate the last that. podcast we did, I was clearly tired <laughs> <laughs> well I, I appreciate that today we're going to be talking about an important subject one that uh, you and I have talked about probably now for it seems like decades but it is the ability for people who feel like they can't get by they just don't have enough money they're limping along month to month there are some opportunities out there that are right at hand that could help generate an extra $1,000 a month. Actually, it could do a lot more than that if people were willing to embrace these side hustle opportunities. And believe me, I know they're out of everyone's comfort zone when they first consider them because you and I have heard every excuse through the years why somebody can't do this. But yeah, as part of our Penny Stupid Project YouTube channel, You've been testing these side hustles for, I guess we're going on two years now, something like that. Yeah. I think my very first lift ride I did was sep like September. We have to go back and watch the video. Go back and check the tape. Check the tape. But <laughs> check the tape. That's how, that's how old Steve is. Check the tape was a joke for him. <laughs> uh, I believe I started in September of 2022. Mm -hmm. So we are coming right up on two years of trying out these side hustles and making quite a bit of money at them, too. <laughs> well, speaking <laughs> of making a bit of money, so let's talk about the average working hours. So this is of all the side hustle apps delivering food or parcels or people or something like that. Uh, and let me just give a disclaimer right off the bat here that you do – much more income per hour than the average. So the skills and tips that you have to offer, people should listen to. Because part-time drivers typically drive 10 to 20 hours a week. And full-time drivers do 30 to 40 hours a week. But part-time drivers who just do like 20 bucks an hour, um, you know, they're doing 500 to even more per week. So you're looking at a minimum of like two grand extra a month for part-time work. If anyone can find an extra 10 or 20 hours in their week, they could easily make that. And full-time drivers. Now, the thing about the gig app economy here is that it is a constantly, it's, <laughs> it's like a river of mud. It's not always. I would say, I would say. I'd say evolving, but I, I prefer it as devolving sometimes. <laughs> it's a it is constantly const devolving. <laughs> it is constantly changing because, because uh, years ago when we first talked about this and you were living in Colorado, right? If you had jumped on that bandwagon back Rocking then, your, your average uh, hourly earnings would probably be a lot higher than what people are getting right now just because we've noticed that the more that people jump in, um, things have changed. Companies change. So things, things are always changing. And, and just for context, what we're, we're, when we talk about gig apps, you mm -hmm. know, we're, we're talking about things like Uber, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Lyft, uh, Instacart, uh, Walmart, Spark. These, these, these are what we call gig apps. And there's a lot of them out yeah. there, but those are kind of the main ones. And uh, for the context of, uh, of this video, we're talking about how you can use these to Make some extra money. And I know a lot of people are, oh, that's beneath me, or I'm opposed to that, or it's not going to work here. Or, I've watched some YouTube channels and Lyft's a scam and Uber's taking all your tips and all this kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, that's why I've been testing these things for the last couple of years. Mainly it started so I can help my clients. And then yeah. it's kind of expanded. We, we've hit over a thousand subscribers now uh, on the Penny Stupid channel. So, you know, yay, yay. for us. We're kind of growing that. But I really wanted to take the time. I know we've mentioned it on this podcast, the, the, the side hustles that Steve and I are doing. But I really wanted to devote some time to it um, to really dig into the details of what I do and uh, the kind of extra money I've made and how I've done it. Because I know there's a lot of people listening to this right now that 
if they had an extra five hundred thousand, two thousand dollars a month, that that could be a game changer in terms of strategies that we're looking at to get them out of debt. And for a lot of people, an extra thousand dollars a month could flip the script for them and, right. and really get us going and get them out of this you know trap that they feel like they're stuck in. And so I really wanted to highlight some of the stuff that we're doing because it's easy. It's easy to do. It's just a matter of making the decision to do it. Well, there's some things that could affect people's income as as they look into this, like, you know, where they live. Um, yes. What time of day they're uh, able to work, whether there are promotions or incentives. So uh, Damon lives in the, the Phoenix metropolitan area, but we've heard similar results from people that live in um, – you know, anything but tiny towns. <laughs> but most people live near some urban area, so I think this applies to everybody. So, Damon, let me just run through a quick list, and you give me a knee-jerk reaction of these apps that are easily available for people. All right, DoorDash. Oh, you want a knee-jerk reaction? Mm-hmm. Um, DoorDash is a great app. It's it's quick. Um, phase Pearly... Phase Pearly well? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you're not. I said Phase Pearly. Oh, no, I caught flip, it. I was just... Flip that. Pays <laughs> fairly well. Um, <laughs> you know, if if you... In my opinion, DoorDash should be used in conjunction with what I call an Anchor app, like an Instacart or a Spark. There are a lot of people that just do DoorDash. Mm-hmm. I, that, that's fine. I don't think you'll make... I know you won't make as much money if you just do one app, but I like DoorDash. DoorDash is a, is a good app if used correctly. Uber Eats. A lot of these knee-jerk reactions are going to be the same. <laughs> just, just like DoorDash, Uber Eats throws you a lot more crappy orders, so you have to be more selective. Um, but they also can throw you some banger orders um, if you're driving at the right time and you're in the right situation. Um, so Uber Eats is a great, easy app as well. Um, you just Uber Eats is not separate from Uber. You just sign up for Uber, mm-hmm. um, but you don't have to drive people if you don't want to. You can right. just check that you know, lot, that box can be checked off or not do it. And you just can deliver food if you only want to talk to burritos and not actual people. <laughs> well, I like, uh, you know, if you want to deliver food and you don't want to interact with people, you could just interact with somebody for 30 seconds. Like, you know, here's your burrito. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Well, I did a, I did a McDonald's uh, Uber Eats last night. Uh, it was just a close one right, right by my house. I was already out and it was late at night and I, I pulled in and I, I'm like, so-and-so, you know, Uber Eats, okay, pull to the window because it was later at night. So the, the dining room was closed. You have to mm-hmm. go to the drive through And I just had a little sweet tooth and I was like, oh, by the way, I'd like to get uh, ice cream. No, I said, is your ice cream machine working? You know, when you're at McDonald's, you got to, I always qualify it now before I ask. And he said, yeah. I said, oh, I'd like to get a cone. You know, simple cone. I'm out working. Okay. So I get to the window, hands me the Uber Eats and he hands me the cone and I go to hand him my phone and he goes, oh, no, don't worry about it. And I'm like, no, I have to pay for the ice cream. He goes, oh no, it's we, it's free ice cream for DoorDashers. Oh, and I was like, I was like, McDonald's gives free ice cream to DoorDashers, <laughs> and, and and he goes, well, I do on my shift, <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to start paying attention to when you're on shift. Then. That's right. <laughs> so, so that's one of the bennies to being a DoorDash driver. Free ice cream if you got the right guy on shift. <laughs> Those are big bennies, baby. Uh, Grubhub. I don't think you've ever done Grubhub. I, I can't get on Grubhub. I've been on the wait list for a year. Um, so I have no idea. Um, but I know from the videos I've seen it, mm-hmm. people, people, the, the, the guys that I follow and I follow quite a bit of them, they seem to the, the use Grubhub as just like a secondary it's on in the background. Maybe once in a while I'll get thrown an order, Okay, but it it doesn't ever, it doesn't seem like a main app for people. I could be wrong, but I've, I've never tried it. Instacart. I used to think Instacart was horrible until I actually tried it and got good at it. I and remember now, you saying, there's no way in the world I'm ever going to do a grocery delivery. Well, yeah. And the first delivery we did, we just totally bombed. I made a bad decision because I didn't know it was only paying like $30 and it was I don't know, like 80 items or some stupid, ridiculous amount of items. And my wife even went to help me. The one and only time my wife went and helped me because she was <laughs> like, I'm done. I'm not doing this crap anymore. This is stupid. It took us like three hours because we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. And it was a bad choice. 
So it's not Instacart's fault that I basically made $10 an hour, <laughs> my first one. And I said, this sucks. This is stupid. But I stuck with it. And that's important that don't just try one shift on a gig app. Go out and DoorDash one time right. and make 20 bucks in three hours and go, this sucks. This is horrible. Can't make any. But that's what so many people do is yeah. they just give up right away. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Maybe you drove at the wrong time of the year. Maybe it was the wrong time of the day. Maybe this town, DoorDash, is not anywhere near as popular as Uber Eats. So well, what that's... I always tell people is you got to try all of them and you got to try them for a while. And that's the important thing whenever anybody starts anything new, uh, and it applies to this. If you want to make some extra money, you're going to just struggle at first. You're going to suck because you don't know what to do yet, but you will. Damon, what about Walmart Spark? I used to love Walmart Spark. I still like it, um, but it's getting less opportunity, at least in my local Walmart. I Mm -hmm. mean, I used to easily be able to get $40, $50 orders on the rig, as Mm -hmm. I say. Um, where I'd have weeks where I'd made seven, eight hundred dollars just on Walmart Spark alone, not to mention the other apps. Just in my office here, there's a Walmart two and a half miles away from me. I'll be sitting in my office working, have the app on, Ding. see a lot of orders come in, twenty bucks, you know, twenty five bucks. Yeah, I don't have time for that. Let somebody else do it. Boom, one comes in forty five dollars. You know, I could be door to door in an hour, forty five mm-hmm. bucks. Okay, I'll do that. Shoot out, grab the groceries, drop them, bing, 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 bing. See if my wife needs anything while I'm out. Because, you know, I've worked from home for 20-some-odd years. Yeah. It's nice to get out of the house. I actually uh, – the funny thing is I don't see these apps as work for me. I I enjoy <laughs> going out there and doing it. I enjoy picking people up. I, you know, I don't necessarily enjoy groceries. Mm-hmm. But there is something nice to just being able to go out, kind of be alone with my thoughts, uh, you know, let my brain unwind, take an hour break, yeah. grab something to eat while I'm out, you know, grab some groceries – Drop them off, come back, okay, plug back in, get back on the phones, haggle with creditors. <laughs> you know, it's nice to kind of break that up. And it doesn't hurt that I'm getting paid to get content for our Penny Stupid channel. I'm getting paid for content to grow a YouTube channel. All right, Amazon Flex. I haven't done Amazon Flex in a while. I, I, I like it though. Um, uh, but I, there's other apps that I like better. It, 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 I definitely recommend you try it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can make okay money with it. Um, it. And it could be a good kind of base app um, while you're out there. So I, I definitely recommend trying Amazon Flex. I just I haven't done it in a while, mainly because I'm not able to access the local Amazon distribution. It's always – it's a preferred distribution center. So it's mm-hmm. always all, – all the routes are already taken by people that do it full time. Yeah. And so they have higher priority than me. So it always wants to push me way down south into Phoenix. So the economics of that just don't make sense. I'd have to like take a whole day and go out and, and do that. So all the other stuff I can just do right around my house, go out, do a quick order, come home. I can't do that for Amazon. But if you've got four or five hours available and you don't mind you know, doing that, it's, it's certainly a good app to, to look into. Again, I recommend trying all of them. So – you you multi app meaning you're running more than one app at a time and you're you looking to. at o- offers that are coming in. When somebody first starts, if they just want to you know dip their toe in the water and try to feel what m- this app gig thing is, do you recommend doing more than one at a time? So here's here's what I'd recommend. Number one, if you haven't yet, go over to search Penny Stupid on YouTube. Go to our Penny Stupid channel. We've got a lot of videos where I'm talking about these different apps and, 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 and I'm doing different scenarios and going through my thought process and how I select orders and things like that. Go sign up, uh, subscribe to that. that. That'll be good information. Number two, once you're there, you can comment on any of those videos. If you have questions, I'll be happy to help answer your questions. I'm thinking about trying DoorDash. I'm thinking about trying Walmart. Mm-hmm. What do you think about this? What do you think? Whatever it is, I mean, I've got a lot of experience doing this stuff. That's why I did it especially if you're like, hey, I'm about to sign up for DoorDash or uh, Walmart Spark. Do you have a referral code? <laughs> uh, I had somebody ask me that the other day. And really? I was like, Why? oh, yeah, yeah, in our Why comments. Yes, I do. That was the first one. <laughs> yeah, and so I sent it to, to them. And, yeah. But, hey, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll help you regardless. But right. if you ask me for a referral code and you have because here's the thing with these referral codes. It's never yeah. like, here's my code, you sign up and I get 50 bucks or 100 bucks. It's, it's never like that. It's always like, Okay, here's my code. If you use it and sign up, but then you do X, Y, and Z right. you have to over succeed. the next 30 days, then you'll both get paid. Like, right. uh, and, and every, you know, promotion's different depending on what city, but like, say, like an Uber might be saying, hey, you know, you refer somebody to Uber and you're going to get 
a thousand dollars and they're going to get a thousand dollars or whatever it is, but it's not just signing up for Uber. It would be like, they have to sign up and then they have to do 200 rides in the Mm -hmm. first month. Most people aren't going to do that. You really, I mean, 200 rides is quite a, is a lot, right? When I, when I did Lyft my first time, I had to do, the promotion was, uh, I think it was a $3,500 guarantee. We'll have to go check the tape on that, but it was two years ago. But I think it was a $3,500 guarantee if I did 180 rides right. in it the was. first 30 days, yep. uh, tips excluded. So the, the guarantee was uh, a lift guaranteed I would make at least 3500 And then if I was short of that 3500 from they'd the, make up the, the lift pay directly, they'd make up the difference. Yeah. Well, I busted my butt. I knocked out those 180 rides in like two weeks. And I can't remember the exact numbers, but I feel like I was like eleven or twelve hundred dollars short within that hundred eighty rides of that thirty five hundred. So they had, within the next day, I had an extra eleven or twelve hundred dollar bonus paid to me. So they made good on that, um, and that's that's the big reason why I made sixty five hundred dollars gross that first month driving Lyft. And that's why I say you got to try stuff now. Lyft in 2022 is not the same as Lyft today. You're not going to sign up for Lyft today and go make sixty five hundred dollars. I mean, you might, but you probably have to work 80 hours a week to do that. I was doing it part-time in the evenings. But my point was that was not even in the realm of possibilities in my mind that you could go download an app, drive people around, and have $6,500. But wait, it gets even better because one of the big features of these gig apps is that if you've got a bill that you got to pay, you got to come up with money now. You can't wait for payday. You, you get can, paid today. Yeah. You, you can you can deliver stuff today, get paid for it today, and it can be in your bank account how fast? Instantly. Yeah, I oh. I, I, I could turn on my, my Instacart app, my uh, Walmart. Well, you can, but you have to get paid on their card. But Instacart, DoorDash, Uber Eats, I could turn all three of those on right now. I could sit there. I could get a $40 order from Instacart. Mm-hmm. I could leave the office. I could go deliver it. And now say 10 of that was base pay and 30 of it was tip. Mm-hmm. As soon as I'm done and I drop it off, I can take the base pay immediately. I can take the $10 and for a 50 cent fee, have it transferred to my bank account. Mm-hmm. They make me wait. I, I believe it's two hours um, to, for the tip. Like you don't, you're not guaranteed the tip for at least two hours because they have time to, after two hours, I could take that whole 40 bucks and have it sent to my bank account. So if you've got a bill that's due by the end of the day, mm-hmm. you could literally, if you had to, Turn on all your apps, start driving around, have a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars yeah, yeah. by the end of the day, sitting in your bank account. I mean, that's what's <laughs> great about these apps. They're so flexible. But let's go back real quick before I forget, because I think it's a very important question. Okay. Yes, go to our Penny Stupid channel. But if you're brand new, do I recommend signing up for five apps and trying to juggle all five at once? Absolutely not. It you'll yeah. it's you you start with one app at a time and learn that app. Spend a week or two. Learning that app. Like I would start the easier ones um, would be DoorDash and Uber Eats. Those are super okay. simple, super easy. Go to Taco Bell, grab a burrito, drive it here. Mm-hmm. That's that's easy stuff. Then, But you also then eventually want to get into Spark, which will probably be a waiting list. And then Instacart has, like Steve said earlier, has become one of my favorite apps just in terms of um, how easy it is. And what I like about it is the dollar per offer that you can get. Instead of slinging burritos at five, six, seven dollars on Uber Eats, and and you know, there's not there there are better orders that you can take, but now we're talking about twenty dollar orders, thirty dollar orders, forty dollar orders that you can get, and uh, on average, you're putting a lot less miles, which means a lot less expense on your vehicle. You're paying for a lot less gas, making forty dollars on an Instacart delivery versus trying to make forty dollars on DoorDash. You might have to do five, six, seven deliveries on DoorDash to get 40 bucks. And you might be driving, you know, 20, 30 miles to do that or 40 if you're really taking bad orders, but you can get a $40 order on Instacart on a two mile delivery because you're getting paid for the time in the store shopping for the items. And maybe you're only driving your car two miles. So most of that, your car's sitting in the parking lot, not racking up expenses. So I like Instacart a lot, especially if you live in a place like Phoenix, that's hot. Get mm-hmm. to go into the store, stroll yeah. around in the air conditioner <laughs> for a half an hour. It's yep. you know, you most of these stores now have Starbucks inside. You grab your coffee. You know, for a lot of people, it's not a bad gig, as they yeah. say. Yeah. All right. We've talked about the income opportunities, how easy it is to get started, how you 
don't have to be afraid of doing this, how to start easily. But I have a list here of 10 common excuses that I've heard over the years. You have two. So let's let's people, talk people about them. People usually call them reasons, but they're excuses. All right. Excuse number one. I don't have enough time. Well, the great thing about these, I don't have time. I've got you know, my consulting business that I'm doing. But what I love about it is you can work these things into your day, no matter what your day is. You can go in the evenings. You can go early in the morning. You go the afternoon. There's no boss. You, you're not working for a company. Like I said, most of the time when I go out, it's because I'm out doing an errand anyway. Kathy will ask me to go grab Walmart groceries or go grab dinner. One of the things that I like to do just because I'm addicted to this stuff. Yeah. I like to challenge myself. I, I like a good challenge. And so, oh, hey, can you go pick up pizza for dinner or whatever? What I like to do, how much was that? Turn on all my apps. Can I make anywhere near as much as that pizza is going to cost me? <laughs> right? And I know it's kind of stupid, but it's just I like to do that. It makes me feel kind of good like, hey, I just got to, even if it's not all of it, I just did a couple quick orders while I was out, and that paid for the family's dinner tonight. Right? It just It just kind of makes you feel like, Hey, we got a free dinner out of the DoorDash or whatever. Or I, I was going to go pick up our pizza. I dropped off a couple other pizzas for some other people that night, and I made twenty bucks. Granted, yeah, we spent sixty because we like idiots, but at least it got twenty dollars towards that sixty. So there's these things are so easy to fit into whatever kind of busy schedule you have. Let's say you're working all day. You get off work. It's five o'clock. Hey, that's the dinner rush. You know, maybe you have an hour or two on the way home instead of just driving straight home. You turn on your apps, make a couple deliveries on the way on home. your way home. Yeah, especially if you have a long commute, try to find some deliveries. You can pick and choose. You don't, you know, an offer comes in, you don't have to take it. If it's going the wrong way, you don't take it. But you might find one that's like, oh, the pickup is right by my work, and it's going ten miles towards my house. I might as well grab it. I'm driving that way anyway, and it might not Same seem like I've... a lot of money, but twenty, thirty dollars a day adds up to a thousand dollars or so, eh, nine hundred dollars <laughs> by the end of the month. Not only do I have nine more excuses to go through, <laughs> oh. but, but also I've been remiss in uh, not letting people know that if you're having any sort of financial struggles, you're worried about debt, you need to get out of debt, you're looking for a solution on how to move forward better financially, you can always reach Damon at DamonDay.com, D-A-M-O-N-D-A-Y.com. All right, excuse number two. Uh, doing this gig app stuff, this side hustle stuff, just is not worth it financially. I'm not going to waste my time. Well, that could be true or it might not, but you won't know until you try. If you listen to a lot of these guys on YouTube, you would think it's not worth it. But a lot of it depends on where you live. And almost just as important, if not more important, are the decisions you make. I know a lot of people don't want to own up to the fact that maybe their own decisions is what got them the result that they have. Mm -hmm. Steve mentioned early in the call. I tend to make a lot more per hour than most gig workers do. Now, I know some of that is a product of where I'm at. I've got better orders. Yeah, but, but you've I've gotten also, better at the, it. Yeah, the, over the last two years, I've learned and I've got little systems that I use now for me in my area, quick little notes of is this going to be worth it or not? So right. you take bad orders, you'll make bad money. <laughs> All right. I'm worried about the wear and tear on my car. Who cares about the wear and tear on your car as long as... Yeah. As you're taking good orders. If you take bad orders, then you have wear and tear on your car that you cannot afford to fix or replace because you're taking orders that are not profitable. Yeah. Take so orders as long that are close as you to learn, home. as long as you account for the expense, the car is just a tool. As long as you're using it to make enough money where there's enough profit good. where you can expense that and buy a new car when that gets done, who cares? Right? So I talk about that in the on the Penny Stupid channel about it doesn't matter that you're going to expense the car, that you're going to wear and tear your car, as long as you're not doing that to take three, four dollar orders, and then all you're doing is running your car into the ground for nothing. I don't know the area well enough, so I don't know how I'm going to get there. Uh, when I first started doing Lyft, I just moved here. Yeah. To Arizona, you know, and I was driving in areas that I'd never been to before. You know how I learned the area by driving Lyft, and you know what? <laughs> they paid me sixty five hundred dollars to learn my area. The app yeah, they tells tell you, you where to go. You where, there you go. Yep. You don't have to know your area. You don't have to know it. Steve, I went, I was doing orders in Mammoth, California when we were on vacation <laughs> last month, right? Yeah. Uh, I've gone to Vegas and done some DoorDash to try it out. I didn't know the freaking area. I was just there for a baseball tournament for that weekend. 
flipped on my apps and tried it out. That's all you need to do. I'm concerned about my safety. That's a valid concern. Um, it depends on your area. If you're in an area where, you know, it's got, you know, concerns, then, you know, maybe you don't do Lyft or Uber where you have people in your car if you feel like right. that's a an issue. Or, you know what, during the day my area is fine, but at night it's a little sketchy. Right. You know, don't that's going to be a personal – yeah, that's going to be a personal decision. Or maybe it's like, you know what? I'm okay doing grocery shopping for somebody, but I just, I don't want somebody in my car. That's yeah. fine too. Just stick with the food apps or the grocery apps and only do it, you know, during the day if you feel, you know, better yeah. at that. But, and, and, and you know. don't go deliver in uh, neighborhoods you don't want to go in. Yeah. I mean, you know, as you learn the areas, you'll know, like when I learned real quick when I was driving Lyft that, okay, there's some areas of Phoenix that I'm not going to go to no. anymore. Mm-mm. And then I don't, and then I decline, you know, you, you're an independent contractor. You don't work for these apps. So if they right. say, Hey, I need you to go here and pick up this person no. here and drop them off there. And you go, no, nah, that's okay. I'm good. I pass. Yeah. Uh, uh, here's another excuse. Number six, I don't like dealing with people. Oh, and the only thing real quick, also in all these apps, if you ever feel unsafe, the, mm-hmm. you can like, you could be going, I'm going to go deliver this food. You can go into some apartment complex, whatever. Let's say you don't feel safe. You can just yeah. not deliver it, and you can just tell them, I don't feel safe. They don't mess around with that. If you just tell them you don't feel safe, they'll be like, no big deal. You know, Don't worry about it. Even if you already have the food, you're just like, no. So safety is is critical. You don't have to like feel like you're putting yourself in danger if there's a situation right. you don't like. So sorry about that. Good I wanted point. to add to that. What's right. the next uh, question? I don't, like, I don't like dealing with people. Well, that's valid. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, deliver burritos. Well, and again, guys, we're not saying everybody that has debt should be doing these gig apps. These gig apps are not right for everybody. Mm-hmm. The point is, this is just an opportunity for somebody that can see an opportunity here. Maybe you absolutely hate the idea of all this stuff. That's fine. But then you have to find something else that you can make some extra money at. This is just one option. But if everything about any of this stuff just makes you want to vomit in the morning, yeah. then maybe this is not right for you. No, <laughs> That's okay. You know, continue the struggle. I understand. Uh, excuse number seven. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll be good at it. <laughs> I wasn't sure I'd be good at it either, although yeah. I, I was pretty sure. Yeah, try. You got to try it. Try. You got to try it. I mean, what's the worst case scenario? You don't make as much as you want. But, you know, like with Steve's example of me with, with Instacart, it went from the app that I would never try because I suck at shopping. It's a waste of time, waste of money to my like go to app, especially here in Phoenix in the summertime. Lyft and Uber are dead. There's like no rides. But there's grocery delivery. Oh, and that was a point I wanted to bring up real quick too. Yeah. That um, the timing. I started right when we started this experiment in September, into September, into October. That's like the prime time of Lyft and Uber out here in Phoenix. It's mm-hmm. cooled down. Everybody's coming back. All the events and corporate stuff, golf tournaments, everything. I was killing it. Imagine if we started this experiment <laughs> yeah, in August, June. June, yeah. And and I wouldn't have known any different. I didn't know anything about any of this stuff. And it would have been dead. What would my perception of this oh, stuff yeah. have been? My immediate perception it would sucked. have been, this sucks. I can't make any money. There's no rides. Or, it's not paying enough. It's a waste of time. All that. And had I had I done that and then just said, screw it, I'm wait, it's, I'm quitting, I would have never got to, oh, it did suck in June. But it was a lot better in October, November. Yeah, but you and did then other Super things. Bowl came into town in February with, with the Phoenix Open. I made four thousand that week when the Super Bowl and the Phoenix Open was in town. Yeah, four thousand dollars just driving people around. I mean, so you got to learn your area, and the only way to do that is to do it, right? All right. Excuse number eight. I don't want to work in bad weather. Let me answer this one. Don't work in bad weather. Okay. Excuse. You don't have to. You can pick your hours and work when you want. If there's a you know huge storm coming, and you don't want to do it, don't do it. Excuse number it's nine. Good. Real quick, the pay is usually a lot better in bad weather, but it's up to you. It's up to you. Number nine, I don't want to commit to a schedule. Perfect. (laughs) You don't have to. (laughs) You don't have to. That's the whole whole point. That's the whole point. No schedule. Excuse number 10, I don't like the idea of being an independent contractor. Okay, then find somebody to hire you and get a job. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I can't find anybody to hire me. Okay. Do you like money? I mean, well, what do you want to tell you? These, you might be out of your comfort zone. I, I totally get it. Uh, but these are opportunities that you can click an app on your phone after you've registered, and they will throw you offers for you to make money. 
and you can pick and choose what makes sense for you and yeah. you, you can get paid today. So I'm, you know, whatever part of that you don't like, uh, the rest of it is just stuff that you need to just mentally get through. Yeah. And, I, and we'll help you through it. I mean, that's, that's why we're, we did this because up before that I was, Oh, have you tried Lyft? Have you tried Uber? Like I told my, told my clients mm-hmm. might, might be able to make money. And now I got to, it's like, you know what? All these excuses, all the people don't want to do it. I want to see what it's really like. I want to go do it. Right. And then, and that's kind of what, so now I'm a better consultant for it. Right. Because now yeah. I can say, Hey, look, here's what happened when I tried Instacart. Here's what I found. Here's what happened with DoorDash and da, 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 da. But now I maybe I work less than 15 hours a week. And again, just here and there going out to do this, going out to do that. And I pretty consistently over the last few months have been making $2,000 a month, only working 15 hours a week. That's not well, a bad gig. So what do people that you talk to helping them with their financial problems and you say, Hey, uh, have you ever considered making an extra 500 a week on your time when you want to work? What do they say? Almost everybody says, that's awesome. I'm going to try that. I'm going to do it. Uh, that's perfect. And most people don't. Right. I so mean, don't let your fear hold you back from, you know, these particular opportunities. I remember before Damon started doing Instacart that he would tell me all the time, there's no way I'm doing shopping. There's no way I'm doing shopping. And my response all the time was, dude, just try it. <laughs> and then I tried it and I was like, see, Steve, it sucks. I made yeah. $30 in three hours. <laughs> sucks, man. Sucks. <laughs> you need to do it better. You need to do it better. And now I'm, not, but now I'm really good at reading the offers. I know my limitations because I'm not the fastest Instacarter mm-hmm. out there, but I'm a lot faster than I used to be. So now I have formulas that I've developed as I've been doing it so I can quickly look at an offer and know pretty damn accurately how long that's going to take me start to finish. And then I can yep. see if the amount it's paying is worth my time. I have a dollar limit that I like to make for, to make it worth my time. Everybody's yep. going to have a different amount. Maybe for you in your area, you're more than happy with 20 bucks an hour if that's what you can make. You know, for me, I'm not going to do that. But if it's 40, uh, okay, I'm willing to do it for 40 bucks an hour and get some extra content for the channel. But the thing is, you got to figure that out. You're not going to be able to go into this from the beginning knowing exactly what you can do and what the offers are going to be and how fast you're going to be at it. You just have to kind of push through it and learn as you go. And the nice thing is you can get paid to learn how to do it. Yeah. All right. Help make ends meet on your schedule. Make what you want to make. Try it for a while. If you don't like doing it, you don't like the extra money, just say no. Uh, If you don't feel safe, like Damon said, there's opportunities right in the app to say, I am not going to do this. I'm not going to deliver this. You almost remember that Walmart one I had way back early on on Lyft. That was like the first month, and we were uh, down in this south area of Phoenix, and it sent me down there. It was like two in the morning, and um, I don't remember the exact details, but there was only one person out there and this is like walmart was closing parking lot was all dark and let's just say the name in the photo on the app (laughs) didn't match the only person that was standing out there i remember that and so i did a couple of laps and they start texting me i'm right here i see you circling so i knew it was that person and i was just like no hairs on the back of my neck stood up a little bit and i was just like nope (laughs) <laughs> sorry dude it ain't worth the 10 bucks or whatever the hell it was but i remember we had the dash cam on that one and i was just like i'm out and then that person was like cussing me out on the app like yeah. oh, fuck you da, 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 da. and i was just like no i'm not doing that it's my car right. if i don't feel comfortable i'm not gonna do it and i'm not gonna get into all those stories but there was a handful of stories i have where i was just like yeah this was a bad decision <laughs> But burritos are fine. You can do burritos if you're not comfortable with people. (laughs) All right, Damon, on that note, let's end this podcast. And like I said before, if you you want to talk to somebody about your finances, hey, maybe you just want to talk about this, go to Damon's website, damonday.com, D-A-M-O-N-D-A-Y.com. Or you can also go to uh, the website, getoutofdebt.org. For more information, Damon, until next time, See ya. Peace.